projectile motion. And projectile motion is anything that moves through the air in two dimensions. And so when I say two dimensions, I mean it's moving both horizontally and vertically. So make that motion with your hand. What would that look like? Right? Any kind of an arced path. It could be really sharply arced. It could be very shallow. And whatever. It doesn't make a difference on um, the path of it. But it's going to be moving in two dimensions. Okay? So these are some examples of projectile motion. Right? Any sort of um, ball that's kicked or hit or whatever uh, is projectile motion. Is, um, is a line drive in baseball projectile motion? Yeah. Yeah. It's eventually going to hit the ground. Right? Eventually it's going to drop. So although it might come off the bat moving horizontally, uh, it's eventually going to hit the ground. Uh, what about a golf swing or golf ball? Yeah, all of these things are examples of projectile motion, anything that travels in that arced path, okay? When we talk about projectile motion, we don't care about what happens before the object becomes a, a freely, freely falling object or before the object starts uh, being in the air by itself. So we don't care about the kick. We don't care about the swing. We don't care about anything except for when the object is in the air by itself, right? when it is unattached to something else. Okay? We don't care about what anything else. We care about what's happening to the object at that exact moment. Okay? Um, Galileo was the first one to accurately describe projectile motion. He also had our um, distinct... Um, our argument, I guess, or uh, controversy with Aristotle about free-falling objects, right? They don't fall faster just because they're heavier. But he accurately described projectile motion, and his analysis of projectile motion is super important to us. Okay? He said that we can only understand projectile motion if we analyze our vertical and our horizontal components completely separately. Okay, so that's super important. Write that down, highlight it, star it, whatever. But we have to analyze our vertical and our horizontal components completely separately. So all of the work we've been doing with vector addition and vector components and all of that stuff is gearing us toward projectile motion. Right? We want to be able to look at an object's initial horizontal velocity and vertical velocity. Its initial horizontal and vertical displacement. Its final horizontal and vertical displacement. So all of these things are, are what we need to pay attention to, and we're going to start observing them by themselves in projectile motion. We're going to take our kinematics equations, and we're going to separate them into here are the equations we use for horizontal. Um, variables, and here's what we use for vertical. But just reviewing, okay? We only care about the time span that we're looking at our motion, and we always think our motion begins at initial position of zero. Okay, so I want you to envision and think about a ball that rolls off of a table, okay? You don't have to write this part down necessarily, just kind of listen and, and envision what's happening here, okay? If I had a ball that was rolling off the table, it would look something like this, right? Here's my table, here's my object. It's going to roll off the table, right? So my origin is here, right? It becomes a freely falling object the second that it leaves the table. Do we agree with that? Okay, so what is my motion going to look like? Does it come off the table and go straight down? Yes, no, maybe? No. Does it come off the table and go straight horizontal? Does it go like this? Thank you. So what's my path going to look like? Right, it's going to look like a curve. It's originally going to move horizontal, and then it's going to start with a curved path, right? So we need to kind of envision exactly what's happening with that, okay? When we analyze this motion, we're going to talk about our vertical and our horizontal 
horizontal components completely separately. So let's think about our vertical components for this example. Okay, when I'm looking at the object rolling off the table, the second it leaves the table, right, it has been moving purely horizontally. So the second it leaves the table, it's still only moving purely horizontal, right? The second it leaves the table, it's still moving horizontal until gravity can start pulling it down, okay? So that means the second it leaves the table, that VYI is zero. What do you think VYI stands for? What do you think that V, what do we know VI stands for? Initial velocity. So what do you think the Y part of it means? Initial, initial vertical velocity, right? That's how you'd say it. Initial vertical velocity, right? Those subscripts mean something. I'm not just adding letters to confuse you. They mean something. And so VYI means that our initial vertical velocity is zero, right? The second it becomes a freely falling object, it is still only moving horizontally. Okay. I want you to put in the top of your notes here, um, this, is, this section is projectile motion, but this is more specifically something called rolling projectiles. Okay, and that's the only section we're going to do today is rolling projectiles. These are objects that leave a surface and fall, that leave a surface and fall. These are not things like kicking a football from the ground and going up and coming back down. These are things that are leaving a surface and falling. Does that make sense? There's two different types of that, right? We're only really looking at the fall on the path. We're not looking at the up and the down, okay? That we'll get to later. But rolling projectiles is what we're focusing on today. So for rolling projectiles, VYI is always zero because the second it leaves the surface, it's still going horizontal. Okay? Our acceleration in the vertical direction is always, always, always negative 9.0. That does not change from our previous vertical problems, right? A, Y uh, is always going to be negative 9.8. Okay, let's look at our horizontal components a little bit. When you have something moving through the horizontal direction, I want you to think about something flying through the air, right, even a football or whatever, does it speed up or slow down in the horizontal direction? Okay. As something reaches its highest point, what does it do? Stops. Okay. At its highest point, it stops, but as it's climbing through the air, what's it doing? It's slowing down. It's slowing down. But I want you to think about this. Is it slowing down vertically or horizontally? Only vertically. As it moves through the air, Right? It's slowing down vertically, but it's still moving forward. Right? It's still moving forward. And so objects that move in projectile motion have absolutely no horizontal acceleration. There is nothing that speeds up or slows down horizontally on its own, right? without air resistance or wind or friction or anything like that. That's Newton's uh, first law of motion. Right? An object in motion stays in motion unless an outside force acts on it. So when an object is moving through the air or moving horizontally, there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction at all. As we see things slow down, we see them still move forward, but it stops moving vertically and then it will start to fall, right? It will still be moving forward at exactly the same rate. Okay, so that means A in the X direction would always equal zero, right? Acceleration in the horizontal direction is always, always, always zero. So what does that tell you about my initial horizontal velocity and my final horizontal velocity? Constant. They're constant. They're the same, right? They're not zero, but they are the same. Our initial horizontal velocity and our final horizontal velocity are the same, okay? So we would just say that Vxi, and sometimes you'll even just see it labeled as Vx because there's only one horizontal velocity. There's not a before and an after. There's just one. It remains constant. Okay, so let me draw that out here just a little bit. Here's my table, here's my object, rolling. Let's say it's rolling at three meters per second. It's going to go through the air, through the air, through the air. Even at the point it gets right here, almost to the ground, its horizontal velocity is still three meters per second. What has happened to its vertical velocity as it nears the ground? It's gotten bigger, right? It's sped up as it, as it goes toward the ground, right? Its vertical velocity has increased, but its horizontal velocity has stayed the same. Mm -hmm. If you throw a ball straight up in the air, does it go faster on its way up or on its way down? 
it would slow down on its way up, then it would speed up on its way down. But those two motions are identical. So theoretically, it would be, if you threw it up at 10 meters per second, it would land at negative 10 meters per second. All right? Does that, does that answer your question? Okay. All right, which will hit the ground first, of the ball that's rolled off the table or a ball that's dropped from the same height? Think about this with your partner, discuss, and see if you can come back with a, Burke you can join a group. Think about this question. I want you to chat and talk and discuss for about 30 seconds, and then we'll report back. A ball that's rolled off this table or a ball that's dropped at the same time? Okay. I would say dropped because it has a shorter path, and the horizontal velocity are the same. I'll show you something. What do you think? How many of you think the rolled ball will hit the ground first? How many of you think the dropped ball will hit the ground first? How many of you think it's not neither of those things? Yeah, what do you think, Michael? It's it's the same. All right, it is going to be the same height because what do we know about horizontal and vertical motion? Do they have anything to do with one another? Do horizontal and vertical motion have anything to do with one another? No, no right? Galileo said you have to use your horizontal and your vertical components totally separate. We cannot intertwine horizontal and vertical motion. It doesn't affect each other. It makes no difference. As long as those objects are, are becoming free-falling objects the same height, which they are, the table is the same height, it will take the same amount of time for them to fall. Okay, so Galileo said that. I'm going to show you the, the picture of that. Okay, so the yellow ball was projected, and the pink ball was just dropped. Right? Mm -hmm. At these time interval pictures, they have exactly the same position. Yeah, this is Galileo's real footage. Why can't we just solve for, like, since we know free fall, why can't we just solve it that way? That's how we'll solve for the vertical component of the motion, but we have to solve for the horizontal component also, and that's a little different. Okay. So our horizontal motion here is very similar to what we did with VY originally. All right, so you just can listen through this. You don't have to write this part down. You can if you want. But I'm going to walk through a little bit how solving projectile motion problems are a little tiny different. Okay? Here's our vertical. Oh, this is not the slide I thought. Okay, never mind. You do need to write this down. These are our vertical equations. You need to write this down in projectile motion on your notes or your equation sheet. Okay? This needs to go on your equation sheet, and it needs to say projectile motion, then vertical equations. Okay? Because you're going to have a set of horizontal equations and a set of of vertical equations. I'm going to go ahead and give you both sets. Mm -hmm. What's the only variable that is the same between the two sets of equations. What's the only variable that these two sets of problems share? T. T, right? Time is the only variable that is not controlled by horizontal and vertical. So time is the only way you have a connection between its horizontal and its vertical components. Okay? So it, there might be problems where you have to solve for time using a y equation and then use time to f get your final answer, which might be an x component. Right? Does that make sense? Time is the only connector between those two things. So I want to show you our equations here. These equations look extremely similar to our regular projectile equations. Would you agree? They just have y's that show us it's vertical. But these equations don't look the same. Right? They look significantly shorter. And so I'm going to show you how we got to that point. Okay? Let's take our regular kinematics equations, V x, f, e. you don't have to write this down, just watch, plus a, x, times t. Right, what do we know about, actually let me just go ahead and get through all these. What do we know about oops, horizontal acceleration? 
horizontal acceleration, not constant, but is, right, there isn't any. If this is zero, what does that make this whole term of my equation? Zero, zero right? Let me do it a different color so we can see. Okay? This becomes zero, which means this becomes nothing. So that's where the first equation comes from. And all it's saying, that equation doesn't even do anything for us. It just tells us that our initial is equal to our final. Right? You don't use that equation to solve for anything. Pretty much, yeah. Okay? My second equation, what do I know about AX? It's zero, which means here's where our second equation comes from. So why is, okay. it, why is it a part of it? Is it always going to be zero? Well, it's not a part of it anymore. We took it out of the equation, right? He, we took our regular kinematics equations, oh, okay. and if I plug in zero for A, now it becomes this. So that's what we use. That's okay. Third equation would look like this. Vxf squared equals V... Oops, that's not a V. Vxi squared plus 2Ax times delta X. Right, but what do we know about Ax? It's zero. So that would leave us with Vxf squared equals Vxi squared. Exactly. We already have that. Vxf equals Vxi. No reason to have it twice. So that's why we get our two equations from. Right? It's just a simplified version. If we don't have horizontal acceleration, our problems become much simpler. Okay? Um, I want you to think about for rolling projectiles, we talked about this term being what? Vyi for rolling projectiles is what? Right, initial vertical velocity for rolling projectiles is always zero. So if this term is zero, that drops out. What do we say our initial position always is? Zero. zero, then that drops out, so you really only got that. Right, so for these rolling projectile problems, we will be able to simplify our equations further. I don't want you to write the, that you know, smaller equation on your sheet because you'll need the long one eventually, but just something to think about. As we go through these rolling projectile problems, we will have opportunities to shorten them down even further. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and try one. A stunt driver speeds horizontally off a 50 meter high cliff. How fast must the motorcycle cliff, how, must, how fast must the motorcycle leave the cliff if it's to land 90 meters from the base? Okay, so I would very strongly recommend drawing these, right, sketching them real, real simply as we go. I'm going to give you a couple minutes to get written down what you need to. Um, but I would recommend drawing them, right? I'm not even going to draw the motorcycle because I'm just not artistic. But essentially, that's what the motion looks like. Right, we'll start doing that together. So I'm not going to get that just yet, but we're going to do that together. Something I want you to point out is that, like, this is not going to make a right triangle, right? They don't fall at a straight line. Some of you will want to do that. Not how it works, okay? So... We make sure we make it a curved path that we're going to end up seeing as he falls. Glides to the crack. All right, let's start identifying some variables here, okay? First of all, I always know that my initial positions are what? Zero. Is it writing up there? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay, I always know my initial positions are zero. If you are comfortable with that, you don't have to write it down every time, but I think until that point, we better go ahead and start identifying that. Okay, what does the 50 meters tell us? The vertical displacement, right? So at the end of my motion, what is my final vertical displacement going to be? Negative 50, right? Why is it negative? Because I'm going to end up 50 meters below where I started, right? If I exaggerated my coordinate system, I'm going to end up way down there, which is negative 50. Okay, what about the 90 meters? What variable does that tell us? X final, right? And is it going to be positive 90 or negative 90? Positive, right? I'm moving forward. Horizontally, I'm moving forward. Okay? 
when it says something speeds horizontally off a whatever, that's a clue for us that it is a rolling projectile problem. If it leaves horizontally, if it speeds horizontally, if it jumps horizontally, whatever, you're going to see that clue. That's going to tell us that VYI equals zero, right? That should be a huge, huge context clue for us that it is a rolling projectile. So that means that VYI equals zero, okay? So we've identified all the variables that we could know from our problem. And now we need to identify what are we solving for? Tell me the variable that we're solving for. Uh, velocity. velocity. Which velocity? <laughs> horizontal velocity or vertical velocity? How fast must he leave the cliff? So what speed does he have to be driving when he leaves the cliff? So we're solving for V, X, I. Wait, so how do you know you're solving for horizontal? Because we know when he leaves the cliff, he's only moving horizontally. So that tells us we're looking for horizontal velocity. That's for how fast, so we know velocity. When he's leaving the cliff, we know he's only driving horizontally because it says he speeds horizontally. Okay. You have to be able to identify that. That's, it'll be tricky for a little bit, but we'll get there. Okay, so now let's look at our equation sheet. If I need to solve for VXI, what other things do I need? VXF. I need VXF, but that's the same, right? We know that's the same. So that first equation doesn't give us anything. <laughs> what else do I need? I need to use my second horizontal equation, right? Right, I have to find time first. So, Joe, you were ahead of everybody. Okay. We need to find time first before we can solve for V, X, I. And so here's what I said. Time's our connector between the two sets of equations. So now if I know I need time, I need to look to my vertical equations and decide which equation can I use to solve for time from my vertical equations. Right? I need to use a second. But here's what I'm going to tell you. You're going to use the second equation to solve for time most often. But let's look at the second equation. V, nope. Yf equals yi plus vyit plus one half at squared. Right? That's the equation that we need to use. We're doing that to solve for time. Okay, does everyone understand this, the sequence of equations that we're using here? All right, yf I know is negative 50. What do I know about yi? Zero. zero. What do I know about vyi? Also zero. So you guys are freaking out about the quadratic. We don't have to use the quadratic. One half. What about acceleration in the vertical direction? What is it? No, you're right. Negative 9.8 because this is a vertical equation, so you were right. And then t squared. Okay, so let's do the algebra that goes with that. All right, these drop negative 50, so it's negative 4.9 t squared. And then I'm going to go ahead and solve that out for t. I used to be able to, like, be here. <laughs> we'll move them all back at the end today, but geez. All right. If you divide it by 4.9, so it's greater than 3.19? 3.19 yeah. seconds. Okay, so is that, is that our answer? Do we stop there? Right, we didn't even answer the problem yet. Right, we haven't even done what they asked us to do yet. You guys. All right, now I need to solve for... Vxi, so I take my second horizontal equation and I say x final equals x initial plus Vxi times time. We know this is 90. We know that is 0, right? So Vxi times 3.19. Am I writing too fast? Okay. 28, I had 28.17, but either way. 
Okay. Oh, I just kept my 3.19 something in my calculator. That's why. So 29.2, that's fine if we're in the ballpark there. What is my unit for my answer? Meters per second. There you go. Oh, okay. Meters per second. Tell me, why is it meters per second? Because it's accelerated. Velocity. It's velocity. Right? V is meters per second. So our units kind of stay the same A rock is thrown horizontally from the top of a cliff, 24 meters high, with a horizontal velocity of 3.21. For how long is the rock in the air? Okay, so get written down what you need to, and then we'll draw it out and get variables assigned. YF. Right, 24 would be my YF, right? It is how tall the cliff is, you're right. <laughs> Negative 24. What do I know about my initial positions? Zero. Both zero. What does my 3.2 tell us? 3.21. V, X, I. Good. 3.21. It says it was thrown horizontally. So what does that mean my V, Y, I is? Zero. Good. Right, zero. Okay, V, Y, I is zero. So I need to solve for time. Do I have everything I need to help me solve for time? Yeah. Typically, in these projectile problems, you're going to be using the second kinematics for vertical because we're very rarely going to know our final vertical velocity. Right? Very rarely are we going to know that. So you usually use the second vertical equation uh, for our verticals. Okay, does that equation apply here? Does it work? We don't know what XF is, right? So we can't be in horizontal equation land. Can we use the second kinematics for vertical? Right. I can say YF equals YI plus VYIT plus one half AT squared. Second vertical, mm -hmm. which is yf, yf plus yi, vyi is t, so vyi is zero. So that makes that whole component. Right. That's hard to answer. Right, right. It just asks for how long it's in the air. That's it. Okay. I think I'm gonna extend the question here, but maybe I'm not. How far from the base does the rock land? Okay. How far from the base does the rock land? Right, exactly. XF. Right, now we already have time. So we're just going to take 3.21 times 2.21. Right, this is VXI times time. 7.10 meters. I use the second horizontal, right? If I wanted to solve for XF, take a look at what equation I need to do that. Okay. I'll write it out a little bit neater. XF equals 0 for XI plus VXI times T. So this means 3.21 times 2.21. That's how I got seven. Okay, and I know since I'm solving for x, my unit has to be meters. Hmm. You ready to try one on your own? Yes, I did. I'm sorry. Yep. A diver. Oh. Got it. Answer. You've got two questions. How high was the cliff and how far from the base did it land? 
that is going to be where we stop with notes for today. So I'm going to give you your homework.